Hello everyone and right now what we're going to be doing is taking another look at Motion Master and before I get started I do want to mention that if you haven't seen those other videos it might be a good idea to watch those videos before you jump in and watch this video here. Now in the previous videos I did cover the basics about how to use Motion Master, how to set it up, how to create your motion blur and your image masks, how to composite all those images with your final render in your 2D photo editing application. If you don't know how to do that, you definitely want to go back and watch those other videos before you jump in and watch this video. But in this video, what we're going to be focusing on is other types of motion possibilities within Motion Master. In the previous videos, we looked at examples that illustrated linear motion, point A to point B, XYZ translations. But things don't always move in a straight line. You know, we have curved motion, we have rotations. And that's what the focus is going to be in this video here. We're going to look at some other possibilities. We're going to be looking at rotation, scaling, and even irregular motion, if I have time. And I'm going to try to squeeze that in. So let's take a quick look at this. This is one example of rotation. I have a character here with some swords. And what I want to do is create a sense of motion for these swords. Even though he's in this kind of still stance, I want it to look like he's quickly moving into this stance, so I want motion blurs on the broadswords. This is very easy to do. I set my start point for the character right here, and then this is the end point. So I'm going to have a motion blur that's going to swing the arm up here like this, and then this sword's going to come down from here to there. And then you simply render the motion blur, and this is the result here. I have my mask for the character. Okay, all this was covered in a previous tutorial. This is the actual motion blur. You have the option here to also just export the objects that are in motion, but it does make it a little more difficult when you're compositing if you export the whole character rather than just the body parts that are in motion. But that's something you have to decide on whether or not you want to do that. Then this is the motion mask. So this is the mask for this right here. This is the rendered image. Okay, we can see that this looks like a still image. It looks like he's in a still stance here. And then here, that is the motion blurred composite image. Now we can see here that it looks like he's swinging the sword down and up to get into this stance. So that's an example of a motion blur effect with rotations on a character. All right, and you can achieve that easily with Motion Master. And again, just giving you an example here, not going to show you step by step how to do this. This was covered in some previous videos because I do want to move on to another example here. And what I'm going to do is load up another scene. So I'm going to pause for a moment and get that new scene loaded up. Okay, so I have this new scene loaded up. And in this particular example, we're going to be taking a look at using Motion Master to create motion blurs for multiple objects. And these are the multiple objects. And I know it's nothing exciting here, but this is just to give you an example that you can create motion blurs for multiple objects at the same time. And in this case, we have eight objects that we're going to be applying motion blur to. And I do want to show you how this is set up here. So in the scene tab, if we take a look at how I have things set up. These right here are the spheres that are going to have the motion blur effect applied to them. Right here, I have a sphere. And these spheres are parented to that sphere. And I've done this in order to create an object that will move all my objects at the same time. And we don't see this object in our scene because in my surfaces tab, I do have an opacity applied to that. Come down here. So notice the opacity is set to zero. That makes this object completely transparent. We take a look here. All right, because this object is just being used to move and manipulate the other objects. All right, so that's what's going on. And then right here we have another, yet another sphere that is also manipulating the bigger sphere. The reason why I did this was to have the rotation in the center. Right? And this is a technical issue, but just to make you aware of it, and if you don't understand what's going on here, that's fine. But for those of you that are interested, here I have another object. This places the rotation at the center where this sphere, if we take a look at the rotation, it's down at the bottom, at the base, and I didn't want that. Right? And then this sphere controls the larger sphere, which is transparent, and all the other nine spheres 
but it puts the rotation right at the center. And again, this was made transparent. So that's the basic setup there. And what we have here, if we take a look at the start point, this object is going to be starting from this point here. The end point is out here. One interesting thing to mention is the fact that as this is moving out from this point, from the start point to the end point, there's a half twist in there as well. So we're creating a rotation. In addition to that, the entire thing is also being scaled. All right, so we have scale, rotation, and multiple objects here. So this is just to illustrate that you can do all these things all at once with Motion Master if you want to. So let's move on and just take a look at the results of this. And here is the object mask. So this is the mask for all the spheres that have had motion blur applied to them. Right here, that's the actual motion blur effect. We started off translated back into our scene. There was also a scale going on here. So things were scaled down quite a bit. And as all these objects moved forward, there was a half twist, which created this kind of pinwheel effect. Right here, this is the motion blur mask. This is the render. And then this is the composite of the render with the actual motion blur. All right, and you can see this is a pretty neat effect. So at this point, I do have one more final thing that I do want to mention. I do want to talk about the fact that you can move separate objects individually. You don't necessarily have to parent those objects to another item to move them. And I'm going to demonstrate this real quickly for you here. And I'm also going to give you a neat workflow tip as I'm explaining this. So what I'm going to do here is I have all these spheres in my scene. Now they're all stacked up on top of each other in the same location. And I am just going to go through here, clicking each one, and I'm going to set these in random positions. So one at a time, I'm just going to move these around randomly just to illustrate that you can simply move each one individually and then create your motion path. So I have all these spheres scattered about in random locations and we're going to create a motion blur for all those objects. Now the workflow tip that I wanted to show you is that now I can just do the set motion end here. I can select all the spheres, click all these, hit accept, and then confirm that motion end. And then now we have to do our motion start but we moved all our objects around and I want my, all my objects back to where I had them before. We can use Control Z. This will not undo Motion Master. So now I'm back to where I want the objects to start. And then I can just hit Set Motion Start here and confirm that. And then now we can just view our start point and end points. And it's as simple as that. All we have to do is render the motion now. I'm going to render the motion, pause the video. So I'm done rendering my composite images and I did re-render this with new settings here to get a smoother motion blur. And what I've done was I've turned my blend sharpness all the way down and the blend fade all the way up. And this will give you pretty good results. It'll give you a really smooth looking motion trail. Let's take a look at the results here of this. And what I have here, this is the mask. Here is the motion blur effect. This is the motion blur mask, and this is the render of the spheres. And then finally, this is the composite image. So that's it for this video. All right, now, one thing I wanted to mention was a regular motion, and I'm going to have to hold off on that in the future. Hopefully, sometime in the future, I'll be able to provide you with a tutorial like that. But I think this is enough for now. I think you really got a good understanding of Motion Master, and I think you can really see all the possibilities here. But again, there are a lot of other possibilities, more advanced topics. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to cover those topics in this video. I'm running out of time here. Since this is a YouTube video, I got to keep it under 10 minutes. So with that, I'm just going to end this tutorial.